Welcome back to Watchmen Talk, a series of conversations with Israeli military and security experts and practitioners. We are having again Major General retired David Sur, Suri. Welcome. Thank you. And in our uh, first uh, conversation, uh, we talked about your uh, growing up in uh, first uh, Turkey, Istanbul, and then in Israel, your military uh, career as a paratrooper, and then your uh, career, or at least its early part, uh, in Yamam, the uh, Israeli elite counterterror uh, unit, which uh, is affiliated with the police and within the police, the uh, border guard. Actually, Yamam is short for Special Counter-Terror Unit for the Border Guard, a very long name for a very, very sharp uh, unit. Now, uh, you uh, took part after uh, you studied um, in, in mid-career, mid-Yamam career, you took part in several actions uh, for which you were also uh, awarded. Um, can you describe one of those, the so-called mother's bus? Yeah. Uh, the mother bus, I wasn't the commander at that time. Ali Kohan was the commander. And actually it was, uh, I think, a turning point, especially, first of all, inside the unit and then publicly. So let's, let's give some background. In 1984, there was um, a terror incident where uh, several Palestinians uh, hijacked a bus, drove it to Dir el-Balakh in the Gaza Strip, and then there was the question, would the Yamam storm the bus mm -hmm. or Sayeret Matkal? The military officer in charge of the operation decided that Sayeret Matkal would do it. The operation was botched, and after that, there were more and more calls for Yamam to do it. Four years later, a bus carrying several workers, um, uh, accidentally or incidentally, working in the mm -hmm. uh, nuclear reactor uh, at Dimona, but it had nothing to do exactly. with, with uh, nuclear affairs, was hijacked again by Palestinians. So please. So those three uh, uh, Palestinians actually came at least, I think, two days before. And they were uh, running from, they, they crossed the Egyptian uh, border, and they tried to uh, find a, a, a car to go into Be'er Sheva and to commit the, the terror activity, uh, act uh, there. And actually the assault on a military uh, uh, car, which the officers were uh, on the way to a kind of a training without even uh, arms, and they had hand grenades and, and they had the Klachnikov and everything. So um, they, they start driving and the police actually got the first uh, call from uh, the officer of the army, which they took the car, actually their car. So it was a, a huge shame. Anyway, there were roadblocks on the way to Be'er Sheva, and this bus, for, unfortunately for them, came just uh, across to them. They shot on the, on the bus. The driver opened the bus. Most of the people left, and but 10 people were stuck at the bus, and actually, it was called the mother bus because all of them were uh, women, which actually putting the kids on the in the garden and then coming late, uh, like a half an hour. One was a man, which uh, he was unfortunately also a widow, so he was like treated like uh, also mother, the same. A, par a parent, a single exactly. parent. And it's important because I mention it because for us as an assault unit, it was very tricky uh, intelligence. So when we came to the, actually we drive to the to the area. Another point, that time, day before, it was Purim. So a big party the at the, the festival of, of Purim, exactly. which is like, like Halloween. Halloween. Exactly, we, and we, were, we had a very uh, big party at the unit with the family, with the woman, uh, each one would bring his wife, uh, girlfriends, etc. So it was a big party till like 12 o'clock or something like that. The unit is not too far from Jerusalem. It's between in, Tel Aviv. In the Jerusalem. valley of Elah. Yeah, between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. Anyway, uh, so we had a small uh, consulting, Alik, me, and Ben, who were the, the, the time the deputy. And we actually we decided that it's not the time uh, to uh, let everyone to go back home because they drink a little. And we thought, I thought it's very important that they will stay at the unit. So we send 
the wife and uh, most of the guests. What time of day was that? It was like 12 o'clock at night. So I'm mentioning it because we were in a capacity like two platoons, most of the unit were at the unit, which is a, a very good very coincidence. coincidence. So, and I, I volunteered to stay with them because it wasn't a very uh, good decision for them because everybody wanted to go home back uh, with the wife. And the, so I said, no, everybody is there. And I sent my wife also. And I stood with them at the unit and actually seven, 15, like 7.15 in the morning, there is a bell ringing at the unit, which is... Alarm. Uh, alarm and traumatic. The automatic, uh, uh, in this kind of uh, alarm, everybody's running to the cars. Each one of them have his... Uh, uh, gear. Gear, everything in the car. And then they go out of the unit, even they don't know where and when. We just tell them, go in this uh, direction. No, no helicopters? That time we had uh, some helicopters, but it was better for us not to wait till the helicopters will come because it will take like a half an hour and a helicopter have another short come. You can't go with all your gear. You have to go with the limit gear and then you have to land in another place, take another car. So it's, it's and actually Sayyid Matkal came with helicopters. So we drive there and they came with helicopters and we came first to the to the ground. So, like uh, an hour and a half drive? Yeah, something like that. We crossed Be'er Sheva and then uh, we came to that area. By coincidence or no, the same general who was in charge for the bad decision in uh, 84, as you mentioned, was in charge as a general now uh, in 88. Mordechai. Itzik Mordechai. So at that time, he uh, gave Alec uh, the uh, green line to uh, operate. And actually, it was a very... Uh, uh, in, in one way, it was a very uh, good uh, uh, position w- uh, which the bus was stopped. Because that time, after uh, they had the shooting, it was a standoff. They went into the bus, 10 hostages in the bus. Actually, they killed the, the person very quickly. And the driver? The driver ran away after he opened the, the doors. And we interrogated the driver. So he said, everyone in there is a, is a woman. So before we came and start negotiating, so uh, just when we arrived, there was a kind of a, a escalation and they, they shot uh, inside. Were they making any demands? Yeah, they wanted the prisoners to be released, of course, etc. and uh, political demands. And and because you do have a negotiating team. We had a negotiation unit, which was very close and start to negotiate. And we kind of very, very much coordinated Actually, after a few incidents, we brought them into the unit, and that was after Waco, Texas, in 93. Okay, we, David Koresh. Exactly. We learned the lessons from them, and I decided, that time I was the commander, I decided that it's better to bring them inside at the unit, even their separate unit. And we had a very good cooperation be, be, before, even before that, in 88. So, actually, there was all the time, two of the three, on the scope of the snipers. And it was a daytime, so the snipers sh- were looking very good. But the two out of three is not good enough because the exactly. third one can detonate exactly. the bus. The, the, the shortcoming of the, the area and the time was that we were exposed on the, on the area, so we couldn't come close to, uh, to the bus to make the assault. So uh, we were waiting for the third one to come into the scope. They, kind of, they, they were curtains, so they, they put them down, so it was a real, a real more complicated. But we had a very good idea what's happening inside. Do you now have a technology which enables you to see inside uh, closed curtains or the bus itself? Yeah, but you have to be in a, in a very short distance. So some of the things that the snipers today have, we didn't have that time, but we had very good snipers. This I can tell you that the human factor almost is the same, and uh, but the technology is by far much, uh, much uh, advantage today. So uh, that time when uh, uh, the, ma- the main important decision was taken in, the, in that uh, incident was that Alec went to the general and told him, which is not very easy decision to take. Let, let me just interject. Just, this guy Alec Ron was one of the officers at Entebbe 
from mm-hmm. Sayyid Matkal. He later led the, the Air Force Commander Unit Shaldag, and then he transferred to Yamam. Exactly. And he was very... It wasn't normal that, uh, you know, somebody from outside coming uh, to... to command the unit. And actually, it was a, a, a time that um, I thought maybe it's about time that I will leave that. But Ali kind of hold me very tight. And I'm glad because uh, he was one of the best commanders we ever had at the unit and uh, did a very good uh, job in that position. And uh, going back to the event, we, uh, we recommended that the general He's, he, he, he is commander, he's got the responsibility, of course. But tactically, he can't control the, 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 the very close circle. And sometimes it's very difficult for the general, you know, to release. But by nature, this is the best uh, decision he took. Because that tactically, um, the, the commanding general of the Southern uh, Front, the Southern Command, Mordechai, should have given and probably did give the commanding officer of the unit exactly. who gave you, the commander of the assault force, liberty to decide when and how to operate. Exactly. When, when he said that uh, he, can, he can say, I don't want you to, uh, to operate because we're looking some different, uh, maybe negotiation, whatever. But once he decides that it's going to be using force, so it's better to give it to the, uh, to the commanders down. And Alec took it. And actually, the timing for that, Alec put it on the ground for the sniping officers because we decided that because it's an open space, the first shoot, uh, shoots have to be the snipers and then the assault. And actually... Again, again uh, one has to, to explain that uh, Defense Minister Rabin at the time had a doctrine going back to his time as Prime Minister during Entebbe that if there is another way to solve the problem, including uh, releasing prisoners, this is better than endangering the lives of the hostages. Yeah, but this time I think uh, everybody uh, were in the same page that we have to, uh, and um, you know, it was, uh, it was that the pressure coming from that time from Boogie, who Boogie was the commander of Sayyid Matkal. This is, this is Moshe Yalon, who later became Chief of Staff and Defense Minister. Exactly. So he came to the general and said, look, we are prepared. We did the, uh, the training, even on buses, etc. Well, all kind of nonsense, I must say. Even when I see the boogie today, I said, look, uh, it was... But you, you don't see it as positive, this competition? Yeah, in a way. But I think for a small country like us, it's about time to do priorities and to say, is, is it... Uh, right to uh, keep this kind of two very expensive units. Very and, and indeed, Yamam was recently exactly. declared the national unit for that contingency. Uh, so there are now two, two units. Uh, one is the Yamam, and the second one, of, uh, the SEAL, Shayetet Shlosser SEAL, for the water... Uh, for what, what is called minister, exactly. which is uh, a maritime hostage situation. So just to end the story, It was the kind of a, a wet dream for a commander. We had three on site. Two were killed immediately. And the third one, unfortunately, the minute, the second, that there was a decision, he, he uh, was uh, down with his head. So the sniper didn't shoot. But we were 10 seconds be close to the, to the bus. To the bus. So the, immediately the guy came and shot him uh, in the face. And, and nobody were uh, armed. Uh, in, in, in such an action. What is the best position for you as the leader of the assault force? Should you be at the very spear or a few uh, guys back? So all the time, a few guys back. That time, I, 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 you must remember, I, was in a, 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 I wasn't the platoon commander. or a, I was the operation, uh, the, the number four in the unit. Okay, so, Operations officer. Exactly. So uh, it's, it's a position which is behind the, the platoon commanders. When I was the commander... There was all the time the question, where is the best place to be? And in my nature and also a opinion, I was all the time uh, in, in, in the fighting, in, inside, in the second or third uh, cell of the, the unit, not at the, at the headquarters. Very few uh, operations, I can say that I was back on the, 
on the headquarters, which is far from the event. But how can you control all of the different squads when you are attached to only one of them? This is the, the main dilemma. You don't have to see them in order to control them. The plan is very uh, clear. Once we start closing to the uh, uh, object, which is, can be a building, bus, whatever, so uh, you, you have everything on the, on the reporting, the communication, etc. Why it's very important? First of all, because the main problem and the influence, and I think this is the, the crucial point, where you, do you think in this kind of operation you can influence the most? If it's uh, the obstacle and uh, the first cell were, is stuck or something like that, it's very important that you will be there to take this, those decisions. So, and there's also the image, you know, the the, the first uh, the example for uh, that's, that's that you the, don't send people to uh, to be killed, but you are kind of standing behind. And I'm not criticizing those operations. Sometimes that you it's better to stay behind, but you have uh, confidence in uh, your second or third uh, officer. But but uh, Tsuri, General Tsuri, um, you see, of course, the um, resemblance. Uh, between the uh, competition between the units and the competition within the unit, which has, of course, values like bravery, perhaps manhood, perhaps vying for promotion. Oh, I think I s- definitely uh, I see it, uh, but it's it's something which uh, every commander can uh, take. Uh, it's not something that you open a book and then you say where should I stay. It's not an air force. It's uh, much more uh, now. Mentioning the uh, term manhood, do you have women uh, in the unit? Yeah, yeah, and uh, but not for uh, the same uh, missions. Uh, like uh, they, and they have a very important role because in other units of uh, the Israeli military and police, and as you mentioned, the air force, there are now uh, women uh, even in combat roles. Women, women can do everything. I, I, I uh, really. Uh, in, when I was the general for the border guard police, let's say, so they have a very important role in uh, the patrols, in the checkpoints. We see it in Jerusalem. We see it in Jerusalem, even in uh, Jordan Shamiria, all of the units, because they are very important on comforting a uh, woman, and we, we understand the culture, so we don't, we don't want men to uh, handle a uh, woman from the other side. And unfortunately, we saw quite a lot of terrorists, uh, which they are women terrorists. But in a unit like Yamam, where you have to run fast, to carry a lot of weight, and perhaps do other physical chores, not every man can, can yeah, do it. So that's what I said. They have a different role. I don't want to go into details, but they are not doing the same, um, the same role that we need those uh, guys uh, to be very physical. So after uh, the mother's bus, one would have thought that um, if a similar uh, contingency were to arise, your unit uh, would be automatically so operated. You're, you're talking about 94 Nachshon Vaxman. Ni- 1994, you are the commander, but you are not in Israel. You are abroad. And the commander of the uh, Judea and Samaria Division, Shaul Mofaz, uh, who formerly was the deputy commander of Sayeret Matkal, has to decide whether to use Yamam or Sayeret Matkal. Again, just like bus 300 10 years earlier. And again, Yamam uh, is being passed over yeah. and people wanted to resign. Yeah. The unit. It was a really big crisis. That time, actually, I was in the Washington in, the, in Quantico FBI to do a session of a very interesting session. As we mentioned before, Waco, Texas, we had this, a similar incident in... Uh, April 94 here of uh, the rabbi Uzi Meshulam. So it was 52 days. This was a siege. Exactly. So it was a siege. And th- there were a lot of parameters which were uh, very equal. Uh, 50, uh, 50 days of standoff, very charismatic rabbi here, very charismatic uh, Lead, cult religion. preacher, whatever he was. But this was a criminal affair, and Yamam was used exactly. in a criminal Yeah, Yeah, because matter. Yamam is a very, very, very important role on criminal. So it was a session that we were running at the FBI, and it was very interesting. The, the, the coordination between the negotiation unit and the assault unit, a lot of parameters were uh, the same. This is the FBI Academy at Quantico, exactly. Virginia. And by that time, on Friday, 
I got a phone call from uh, Asaf Hefetz, who was the commissioner, saying, look, how quick can you come back? I said, I'll take the first flight and I'll come 12 back. hours. Exactly. And uh, when I was in the, on my way back to New York to take the flight, actually there was the South. So one, again, one... I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm not sure if you did or not, but I'm not sure what Ehud Barak, in the interview you had with him uh, here, on this here in this uh, table, What was his uh, answer to a question, why was this decision not to give it to the imam? Well, he, he uh, explained that uh, he uh, delegated the authority to the uh, uh, major general on the ground, the division commander, okay. Sha- Shaul Mufaz. Yeah. But, but um, again, to give the background, uh, an Israeli soldier, uh, Nachshon uh, Waxman, was abducted a few days earlier His whereabouts were not known, and only on this Thursday or Friday was it established that he was somewhere in exactly. the West Bank. Had you been known, had you been alerted a day earlier, perhaps you would have made it. Maybe, because all of the focus were in Gaza, that he was holding Gaza, and we, we thought... The demands were sent from <coughs> Gaza, and we, we were sure that it's going to be a long, like a... Gilad Shalit or something like that. We knew, and then we had Saadon before, so we had the cases like this. So we were sure that uh, there's going to be a long uh, term of... Uh, but before I left, actually, Nachshon Waxman wasn't uh, an issue, wasn't an incident. Uh, I, unfortunately, the Seret Matkal again, when he, they did this assault, um, I'm, I, I don't think they... Uh, Uh, I think they were very brave in the way they did it. And actually, they succeeded very quickly to come to very close to Nachshon Waxman on the aisle. The main mistake, when we do a post-mortem, is that they didn't use the, the window. Because they, they, once they would have used the window... Which, you would have used the window? Yeah, because our... our uh, Doctrine. Doctrine, and also the, the plan was uh, presented by my deputy there, showed that we want to go there. Uh, they said that he wasn't insist enough, and he didn't give the whole the comprehensive... There, uh, wa- there was another indoor steel bar or, or uh, obstacle yeah, which they between, weren't aware of. Yeah, because it was in inside door. So the only way to come from outside the first... Uh, the first uh, engagement. Com- engagement was through the window. The, but the window was from a metal. It's not easy window, just you open it. So th- this metal had to be treated, and we had the technology to do it. So it's a long story. But the, the issue is that both of the incidents, actually, Nachshon Waxman, and also uh, uh, Bas- 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 uh, 300, 300, were in the, uh, not on the green line. So formally, the general was in charge was the military general, and he got the authority to take this decision. Now, after this declaration, I think all the generals of the, uh, the military have more uh, flexibility today to say, okay, that's it. I mean, there is no borders because it's technically. I mean, this green line, it's technically. It's How many split seconds do you have um, when you break into such a room Or, or such uh, an apartment before the uh, terrorists understand what is happening and shoot the hostage first? It's sometimes it's second or two. That's why if you can use the snipers, it's the best, like we did in 88. So they, they didn't even know that they are dead, okay? But once you have a wall or uh, obstacles, etc., sometimes you use flash uh, bands or you use some uh, other techniques so you will gain some seconds. To shock them. Exactly. Some seconds before. But talking objectively, the Nachshon Waxman incident was very difficult to save him. So I'm not saying that our uh, plan uh, would have uh, saved him. This is something uh, which was published, etc. I think it's... Like Monday quarterback. I mean, you can't, you can't say that. It's in, in that operation, uh, also an officer of Sayyid Matkal was killed, was killed near for us. His father, his late father, was a pilot, pilot yeah. killed uh, in a very in one, uh, tragic incident. One, one of uh, the wars. And um, ever since 1994, there were 
almost no such uh, incidents. Well, not vocal ones, because you must understand, and that's why Yamam is so qualified. Yamam is handling like 50 to 80 hostage incidents in a year, which nobody hears about them. All kind of lunatics who barricade themselves uh, with his wife, uh, domestic situations. Uh, sometimes it's uh, somebody who have to be evacuated from his house. Again, it's law enforcement. It's criminal. It's law enforcement. But the technique and using technology is the same. So it, and you negotiate. 90%, even more, 95% of those incidents, we, we finish them by negotiation. We don't have to break in. Okay, and uh, so there is a definite need for such a unit, even during peacetime. Of course, I mean, of course, it's uh, the police is using them for uh, only uh, uh, this month. Uh, you saw in the because and we were maybe you will talk a few uh, words about the escalation of the Arab society violence within Israel. Within Israel, so the Yamam is uh, being used because they are very good in uh, camouflage, they are very, very good in uh, uh, arrest, uh, very um, uh, efficient, the, but they need a good intelligence. So a quarter century after leaving Yamam as its four-year commander, you are still one of their uh, main uh, champions. Um, you're very enthusiastic about them. And uh, because we uh, spent most of this uh, segment on Yamam, we will have a third one shortly. And then we will also speak about uh, policing in Israel, Jewish-Arab uh, relations, and the division of labor between the various forces, the military, the intelligence agencies, and the various units within the police. Again, Tsuri, General David Tsur, thank you very much. Thank and you. we will soon meet again. Thank you.